Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. You're there, boy. What day is today? It's 2021? Yes. I haven't missed it. Yay. Um, I'm not sure what to say. Haven't heard any good news about 2021, so can't really say much. I haven't heard a lot of bad news. True, that too. So it's good. Well, it's on probation. Uh, that, that's, as, that's as charitable as I'm willing to be here these days. Yeah, true that, true that. But anywho, um, in today's episode discussion, mostly, we are going to take a look back at 2020 and see what entertained us. As all of you guys know that... 2020 has not been a nice and kind year for having fun. So we are going to review what we have done to mitigate that. Because uh, having fun is important to us because... <laughs> what was the line again, Silver? All, uh, all work and no play makes something, something, something. So, something, something dark side, yes. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So I'm picturing you typing on your message chat, all work and no play makes Norman a dull boy. And then it's scribbled on your walls and someone comes in and says, oh, well, this is slightly less encouraging. <laughs> I was thinking of the Simpson version. All work and no play makes Homer something. <laughs> Go crazy? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Still, uh, uh, that is fun. But yeah, um, I'm going to start off with movies. So usually this is where we would uh, sit down and talk about the movies that we watched for 2020. But because of, well, pandemics, that's kind of cut short. But I'm sure we did saw some. So Silver... What movie did you saw? Like, uh, no, no need to go into details, but just some highlights. Hmm, highlights. Well, the last movie I saw in a theater was Onward. Oh. On Onward. And I actually thought that was a pretty good movie. It was... I expected it to be just, oh, look, it's a... It's a fairy having a cappuccino. Isn't that weird and silly? But no, it had a lot of heart to it. It, it had a really great uh, dynamic between its lead characters. Yeah, like Spider-Man and, so, and Star-Lord playing off each other. That was really fun. <laughs> That's one good way to look at it. Uh, but yeah, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. I won't say it's Pixar's greatest, but it was still really, really good. Now, in terms of rewatching movies, I checked out Nausicaa Valley of the Wind mm -hmm. and had a really good time just re experiencing that. Though not many people know this, I'm old enough that I remember Warriors of the Wind, oh. an earlier dub made uh, that you could get at Blockbuster Video. Oh, wow. Blockbuster's like <laughs> not there anymore. Okay. There's like one blockbuster left in the whole of America. I think it's in Alaska. I thought there was. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Like, I, I remember some place having a blockbuster, but you can rent the whole place kind of deal. That I'm not so sure of. Either way, I actually found that the old dub is on YouTube. Oh, really? No. Yes. Quite curious. <laughs> well, quite dubious at the same time, too. Just look up Warriors of the Wind poster. And. It looks so very, very different. It, and it's almost comedic, just how weird the the poster is. Oh, oh, what? Oh, wait, have you looked it what? up? Y yeah, I, I remember bits and pieces of this, but wait, why is the American poster so... Um, Star, Star Wars-y? That and also bad box art Mega Man. Because they're trying to lure you in with the promise of a Star Wars. It's not. It's not, but they want to try and trick you. Like, oh my god. I'm I'm not sure what's more ridiculous. The fact that the lead heroine is reduced to being in the back for the crime of being a girl. 
or the fact that one of the fire demons uh, is standing on the body of a fire demon, or that all of a sudden there's a cyborg with a machine gun on its arm and another guy on a Pegasus with a rifle. It's... <laughs> This is one. Of, okay, have you seen the other uh, box art? The other box art. Uh, let's see here. That's the one where it actually does show Nausicaa, uh riding her glider with an ohm in the background. Yeah, and then <coughs> the Warrior of the Wind is in red text. Yes, which blends with the ohm's eyes, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, uh, still that is that that just doesn't explain anything. Well, it's at least more true to the contents of the movie. I guess, oh man, it's, it's one of those, how do I put this, um, movies, even to this day, they don't really trust the content of the game to, or game of content, the content to carry itself. Because if you have something good on your hand, just let it be. But uh, you remember what The Last of Us uh, when they wanted to put the picture of Ellie on the front, but people didn't really believe that Ellie would carry the game, so they had to put Joel in it too. Mm. Well, I didn't play that game. I did hear about all the controversy around it. Oh, I'm just talking about the first one. The second one is just, oh, God. Oh. Like, ugh. Okay, the first one. Well... I didn't play the first one either, so I'm still somewhat in the dark. I mean, as a recommendation, the first one is a game that you should really play. It's good. The second one is... Oh, my God. Okay, um, play the first one and then decide if you want to play the second one or not because it's one of those situations where... Why did they make a second one? Because only if we're in Last of Us 2, the search for more money. <laughs> True, that true, that. <clears throat> but you. Oops. Sorry. Fuck. The, my first of the year. Yay. Uh, but you mentioned something about uh, Nasuka. Like anything else besides that? Well, let's see here. Nasuka. Trying to think. This was not really what I would call a movie year. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, while you think, I, I'm going to list down what I saw in quote unquote theaters. Uh, okay. I saw a movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan, but not really, called uh, v, 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 V2. Wow, what, what do they call this? Because uh, in English, they call Journey to China? <laughs> Something like that. But it was a pretty interesting movie um, that was, quote-unquote, 2019 going to 2020. And then Playing With Fire, that's another nine, uh, 2019 movie going to 20. Birds of Prey, Sonic the Hedgehog, Onwards, Bloodshot, Scooby-Doo, Digimon Adventure, Last Evolution, and Bill and & Ted. Bill & Ted, I watch it at home because of reasons. <laughs> this year has been one of those movie years that it's kind of, yeah, that sucks. And also, I, I remember Onward was the last film I saw before the lockdown. Mm. And after that, there was uh, the num our the the, sorry, the cases of pandemic uh, went low for a bit, and theaters opened up. So I I managed to saw Bloodshot, Scoop, and Digimon in theaters. But uh, all in all, it, it was one of those situations where I do miss the theater. The theater experience is something else. And I agree with you. I I enjoy, especially again with friends, to see uh, just to see a movie in the theater. It is a whole different experience, especially if you get one of those great theaters where they where they bring you your food. Oh yeah, I mean that that's great. I, I experienced that before, and yeah, that is good. By the way, have you seen Sonic? No, it's not really a huge interest to me. I, as I understand it, people really enjoy it, but to be but I think a lot of goodwill is extended. Simply by ver by the fact that they changed Sonic's design. True, but at the same time too, like how to put this? I I was a Sonic kid back in the day. Like I grew up with Sonic One, Two, and Three, and those were my jams. 
Like I, I really love playing those games. Those those games were fun. So I, I <laughs> Sonic has a uh, what you call this? Sonic has this close attachment to my heart. Like it's close to heart. Oh, there you go. Rewatching this, it was not that bad. It was not that bad. Like it was strange hearing, uh, Dewey talk as Sonic. Mm, do you sound like Dewey? It is Dewey. Mm. Well, you know, you know, voice actors can do different voices. Nope. <laughs> but it's the same thing. Well, there you go. You could have some fun with dubbing then. <laughs> yeah, people, people, uh, people have. I, I, I guess so. But still, in all honesty, it was just fun. It was just fun. Oh, man. Now, just picture Sonic saying, I will cram it down your throat. <laughs> God, oh, God. <laughs> mm, mm. Well, now. Um, <laughs> what, um, um, what have you been playing, my friend? <laughs> well, I've been playing games-wise. Well, okay, for a time, games weren't even a high priority. But Destiny 2 dominated a good chunk of time because for better or worse i tried out the season pass oh yeah during the uh season of arrivals and this is interesting since destiny 2 came out they've been uh foreshadowing the arrival of the darkness (laughs) this fleet of black pyramid ships that every time you see one this music he's up here And it's meant to really intimidate you. And it, honestly, I think it kind of succeeds. So I tried the season of Arrivals and the, the quest to basically understand or communicate with the darkness that has declared its presence. And that led into this, the Beyond Light expansion, where you go to a new world and you start wielding dark power in the form of stasis to freeze your enemies. Now, Stasis was sort of a a blessing and a curse. Blessing for a single player as you had the fun of throwing up vast walls of ice and shattering your enemies, and it's great for crowd control. Doesn't work so great in player versus player as you basically kill the flow of gameplay. I mean, no one has fun getting frozen in place and having someone emote and mock you before you can even break free. And then you're at like one health, so one one shoot is all it takes yeah that sound, that doesn't sound good nope not at all but i will admit i got into it but after a while you you realize you've got a soft level cap where random drops stop producing stronger uh weapons and gear then you have a hard limit where the exceptional gear stops dropping at a at a higher rate after that th- there are ways to go even further with the pinnacle gear <clears throat> but it it's so long and such a chore, I actually think it's not worth the effort. So I was very glad for my birthday to get Spider-Man Miles Morales. Oh, nice. And I have fallen in love once again with web, sw- web swinging through New York. Oh, God. So it's a web slinger, but you web swing, yes. Are you sure it's in New York? Uh, wait, Peter was in New York, right? Yes. And Miles? So is Miles. Full of New York or Bronx? Full New York, but it's Christmas time, so they changed the environment slightly. Oh, okay. I mean, I really need to get on that game. Like, that game is one of those things that I should really get. Well, it's funny. I mean, it's one of those games where there's a waypoint saying, hey, the story progresses here. Yeah, that's nice. I'm swinging over here. (laughs) I'm doing my own thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a crime. I'll go stop it. Okay, crime solved. Whee! <laughs> oh, man. That's fun. That's fun. So it's the sandbox we're getting around is the funnest part. And it says, like, oh, you can fast travel here. Fast travel? You insult me, sir. Yeah. The, the fun of those kind of games is always the uh, tr- web swinging. Like, yeah. For, for me, like, the only game... Or, of 2020 or the new game that I got in 2020 was Ghost of Tsushima and that was great like the, the, the experience there was great and I'm trying to really remember what I did play in 2020 in terms of gaming and I, I, I'm i really thinking really hard on it and 
I I guess I spent most of my time playing Doom 2016. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I need to download the DLC. <laughs> For Doom 2016? Oh, sorry, Doom 2020. Uh, 2019, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Like, 2016, uh, 2019, I'm not 100% sure if that's going to, like, oh, man, I don't know. Feel like it's a good game, but, oh, man, like, seriously, I got no idea. Well, we'll figure things out. Mm, well, probably. Um, It's one of those cases where, um, I'll just wait for the game to go on a huge discount and probably buy it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but besides uh, video games, like, I haven't really touched Overwatch. You know, neither have I. I have it. I enjoyed it for a time, but I guess the they keep saying, oh, look at this new character. It's like, yeah, but you're still just moving a box back and forth. In all honesty, I don't mind it, but I don't know. Like, I feel like Playing, uh, I'm trying to find a nice way to say it, but I don't know. Like, I feel like the game is stagnant. And I there's, there was a period of time where the game really lagged on me, where it dropped frames for me. So I was stuttering at places, and that really frustrates me. Yes, I understand. I felt that frustration too. It's like even trying to get better... You can only go so far before you engage in voice chat, and boy, that's a problem. Yeah, like, oh god, uh, the what you would call this, um, the player base, they're not that great. Uh, uh, they're 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 not that great. Oh dear. So I'm curious what the news is with Overwatch Two. I haven't heard anything. Like, like I I have been off the grid for Overwatch. Like, I haven't been watching um, YouTube's video on it and whatnot. Like, I, I'm I'm totally in the dark. Well, I'm in the dark as well. I don't know what, if anything, whenever it will show up. Yeah. Fooey. Yeah, but still, um, if they do show up, I'm sure we'll hear about it. And then we'll have the Overwatch fans in force saying, hey, our game is back. Yay. And then we can play it. So, yeah, besides that, like, I'm just thinking, like, what have I been playing? Like, oh, man, like, besides the Tsushima, like, nothing much, man. Oh, there's a game that came out that was really popular. Mm, can you be more specific? I think there have been several of those. Among Us. Oh, yes, I have played that. Yeah, like, that, <laughs> I, I played it, too, and my playgroup was a bit, a bit, a bit nutty, but so, yeah, um, wow. That game came out of nowhere, man. Well, it apparently had been out for several years, but it only caught on when a when a streamer started playing. And then it's kind of strange. No one, I think, would want to say, oh, I'm so glad COVID happened because my game took off. <laughs> but that one can't ignore that the environment created an opportunity for some, for some. Yeah. One that they would never ask for, though. But at the same time, too, when you really think about it, right, I don't think the pandemic did much. Okay, um, the pandemic could have helped uh, make the game more popular, but I feel like it was just the right place at the right time kind of deal where you got a popular streamer streaming the game and then people take a look-see and it was really entertaining. Uh, the game was cheap on Steam and it's free on mobile. So with mm. all of those things combined, they made the perfect formula. And then uh, when other people played it, other streamers played it, and you get a situation where the game was so new or still new that you got no idea how it's going to play. And since the game is uh, randomly generated and the player base makes the game there is where the game lies in its entertainment value it's your play group it's how you're playing with your friends that's what makes it fun and yeah I mean obviously you can't play it with randoms but playing with randoms is not the same as playing with your friends because 
playing with friends, you get to hear them try to weasel them away out of getting killed and whatnot, or trying to pin it on someone. Or breaking the rules. Uh, I enjoy watching uh, Neebs Gaming, and they've done <laughs> Among Us videos where they animate the uh, meetings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are guys who get really into it. They, they, how do I put it? They, they get angry. It's like, <laughs> oh, you did it. Uh, you did it, you son of a. <laughs> I remember Neebs. You, you, you uh, pointed me their direction when uh, Subnautica? Yes. Oh, Subnautica is still, in my eyes, one of their best series. Yeah, yeah, that was one. Like, the game had no narrative, but they somehow made a narrative out of it. Yeah, there's a there's a basic narrative, but I emphasis on basic. Yeah, it's it's very basic. <laughs> oh man, it was still fun. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, uh, talking about YouTube's and whatnot. Like, what have you been watching, man? Like, I, I I'm guessing uh, this is not really in terms of 2020, but what in general? Well, let's see here. Definitely watch a lot of Neebs gaming. Uh, another fellow I watch on YouTube is called Lord uh, Baldermort. Okay. He does War- Warhammer 40k lore videos, and he has a very dramatic voice, and a bit proper Britishness to him, which only enhances it. Ah. And so he talks about all the various factions and especially uh, the military units of the Warhammer series. And he, he speaks with a great deal of passion. And you can tell he really loves this this uh, franchise, and which is why it makes it so fun. It's a good introduction beyond if the Emperor had a speech-to-text device. So, after hearing all of the Warhammer stuff, uh, does it inspire you to go and play it? No, because the price tag is an instant discouragement. I do collect some of the uh, game books just so I can read more about the various units and factions. Even if the what uh, PC version of it, like from what I heard, like they never go on sale because it's kind of a living game where each update stuff like it's it's very expensive. It likely is, but the ideas behind it I find very fascinating. I think the best point Baltimore made is that the the uh, Codex Astartes, the Space Marines, <clears throat> they're very practical solutions. There's no monks with laser swords to come and sort your problems for you. <laughs> there's just a there's just a cruel, somewhat uncaring universe, and it's on you to fight for your place in it. Now, granted, Warhammer and its grim, dark uh, setting has a very artificial feel to it. People always critique, like, My Little Pony or the like, oh, it's so kid-friendly or everyone's just so nice by default. And then I think, well, hang on. Is it Warhammer with its uh, super dark, everything is horrible, everyone's miserable uh, story? Isn't that just as artifi- an artificial and extreme? I think the difference between MLP and Warhammer is what it's there for because... Uh, Warhammer is there to kind of set the universe and tone of the game that you'll be playing and the miniature that you'll be painting and whatnot. And Pony is just a TV show for kids. Like, that's their target audience and that's their goal. With Warhammer, well, if you really want to get down and dirty with it, it's just a bunch of dudes painting their miniatures and then throwing dice to see if it hits or not. And yet the irony, or perhaps the grand humor in all this, is that uh, we have overlap within the fandoms. Oh, true. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, with, with every set of entertainment, like you will see crossovers between whatever. Like, one of the biggest obvious one that comes to mind is My Little Pony crossover with Magic the Gathering. And I'm not even joking, they officially did it. <laughs> And another one was what? My Little Pony crossover with Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> oh, yes. I bought those figures. Oh, wow. <laughs> did, did they arrive? They did. How, how do they look? Good? 
They're very good. Uh, wonderfully crafted. Bigger than I expected. Oh, really? No. It's like, hey, this is this is supposed to be my little pony. What the hey? Oh, okay. Did you have what? Uh, the what? Optimus Prime, and so on. Optimus Prime for Dungeons and Dragons? No, uh, My Little Pony. No, I didn't get an Optimus Prime figure. Like, uh, my My Little Optimus. Yeah, I forgot the name, but there was what? Um, there was the My Little Pony crossover with Power Rangers, crossover with Twisters, crossover with. Uh, what was it again? There was a lot. Like, Ghostbusters, I remember, right? Uh, yeah. P- Power Rangers, the pink one. There was a time where I wasn't interacting with the outside world very much because there was a pandemic. I I even... I know that uh, it's been disproven now, but there was even the fear, if I order something, what if the germs are in the box? It'd be like the Simpsons. Oh, God. Uh, there was a time that you believed that? It was what early on when I was uh, somewhat suspicious. Ah, yes. yes, I mean it's one of those cases where I don't blame you because the pandemic was still new and it was not much information were out there that was trusted. So as time goes on, we learn. Well, there's still a lot of information out there, but I think we've grown more cynical. Question: Who's saying it? If I'm not mistaken, the American public loves Fauci. A good chunk of them, yes. Yeah. Including myself. Uh, but that's, huh? that's good. From what I can understand, he is a good guy. A good guy doing his job. <laughs> In a very difficult work environment. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> we all have uh, hard work environments. We're getting political and depressed. Bad combination. <laughs> yeah, true. But still, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to take the floor for a bit because... Uh, 2020 was also the year where I <laughs> I really went in heavy into Magic the Gathering again. Uh, I, I know I've been saying that I've been playing it for a while now, but this year was different in terms of uh, my quote-unquote love because <laughs> during the pandemic, um, we had an online session where I was playing it with my friends and whatnot and we were talking about it and I, I just said that, you know... Um, uh, sorry, uh, they were saying, uh, us talking us uh, about cards like this reminds me of doing a podcast. And I just say, yeah, I, I do it every week. And then like they ask, like, oh, you do it every week? What what do you do? And then I show the NBA show. And they say, like, oh, that's cool. You know what? I feel like I want to do this. Anybody interested? <laughs> so hence the Gatewatch cast was created. And that is my Magic the Gathering podcast channel where I talk about Magic the Gathering and stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. Like the the biggest difference between the MBS show uh and also that one is video. Like me and a friend we go in front of a camera, we talk about stuff and it feels totally different. Like in all honesty, if we live in the same country, live in the same state and live like 50 minutes, we would have been doing this podcast side by side or whatnot. And we'll have cameras and stuff. So that's good. The, the feel is totally different. The feel is totally different. Like, man, I wish we could have done video for this. <laughs> you can actually look your fellow podcasters in the eye. Look me in the eye and tell me that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We we, we have... Uh, oh, man. But I, I do also appreciate that what we're doing with the MBS show because the, the feel... Okay, granted that um, lag because of internet is there. Also, it's one of those things where when we have this awkward silence... It's like, oh no, awkward silence. Need to do something. Ah, okay, I, okay, okay. I can fix it in post. So Come there's, <laughs> so there's this, there's this two thing where doing it this way is different from doing it that way. And luckily for me, I have to. Ex- uh, I got to experience both of them. And in honesty, I like them both. Like they're just entertaining and so much fun. Well, good uh, to have options. But yeah, yeah, true. And yeah, that that's quote-unquote what I've been doing in 2020 for entertainment wise besides that like what are we missing oh yeah Silver you mentioned that you've been 
uh, talking about audiobooks? Yes, lots of audiobooks. So what have you been listening or reading to? <laughs> oh, lots of things. Uh, let's see if I can go through the list. I pulled up my, audi- my Audible library. Thing is, folks, I started a new job at the very, very beginning of 2020. And in this job, I'm working on a lot of graphics, but I'm also in the corner, sort of away from the main flow. And folks don't talk to me all the time. So I need a little something just to keep me engaged. Keep the sanity. So, some books that I've been listening to. Uh, The Extinction Cycle by Nicholas Sansbury Smith. Sort of a take on the zombie apocalypse But they try to say, oh, no, these aren't zombies. They are something very different. (laughs) But uh, infected by a variant of the Ebola virus and a a biological weapon. But ultimately, I'm like, no, you're you're still playing to the zombie apocalypse tropes. (laughs) Then I took a look at Tarnsman of Gore by uh, John Norman. The Gore series is, well, that sounds incredibly violent. It's set on an alien world, and it's a bit juvenile in some of in it, its swords and sorcery. Guy becomes sort of a warlord champion of the land and gets the incredibly hot girl. Okay. <laughs> so it was a fun and somewhat silly. Uh, then The Natural History of Dragons, a memoir of Lady Trent by Marie Brennan, which is how a young... Uh, how do I put it? A young noblewoman begins her journey to become the foremost authority on dragon biology. Oh, as this is a this is a Victorian era world where uh, dragons exist, and she is going to learn more about dragons than anybody. Then the Red Rising trilogy got a sequel trilogy, but only two of the three books are out. So Pierce Brown p- has produced Iron Gold and Dark Age. Put simply, there was a war for independence amongst a Roman-based space uh, empire. And now we find that one war leads to another. Actually, the slogan is, war eats the victors last. Just when you thought everything was hunky-dory, you get to see how things go wrong again. Oh, God. Very wrong. What about Game of Thrones? I, uh, well, they haven't made a new book for that in a while. Uh. Or are you saying... uh, are you saying uh, the victors of those wars get eaten pretty bad? Because one could argue the Lannisters for a time had won. Yeah. But boy, they didn't stay on top for long. Yeah, I mean, Game of Thrones is not a... How do I put it? It's not a very nice show. It's a show that's demonstrated my, uh, good men can't survive in corrupt environments, but at the same time, the corrupt individuals don't really win. They just set up their own doom. Yeah, it doesn't really reward the kind of hearts and stuff. Let's see. Uh, Next trilogy I took a look at was the Interdependency series by John Scalzi. Scalzi. Pardon me, John Scalzi. This one, there's an empire uh, amongst the stars, but... They can only travel between worlds through a hyperspace flow, which is actually, it's like a a tidal current amongst the stars. And it's changing, it's shrinking, it's moving. Whole worlds are going to become isolated. And because the interdependency is, as the name implies, its economy is set up to force others to depend on one another. So no, no flow no uh no trade whole colonies are going to starve and die that sounds grim it is and so the there's the challenge of what are we going to do how are we going to fix this because it a big shift in commerce results in a shift in power and also opportunists take the field i i feel like you have a team like it's either space war or space wars. <laughs> well, then you'll be glad for the for the next one I read <laughs> or read. What the hell did I just read? A novel of cosmic horror. <laughs> the 
This one is set promptly on Earth in a middle of nowhere town. And it's basically the continuing story of by David Wong of uh, basically group dealing with supernatural horrors and trying to make sense of it. But they are the most emotionally and, and logically ill-equipped people to ever tackle this. Oh my god, this sounds fun. It's a very grim, dark uh, fan, uh, comedy. Oh, uh, on a side track, um, you said something with uh, paranormal and stuff. Have you heard the game uh, Phasmophobia? Mm, I haven't. Uh, it's another uh, online game where a bunch of people work together to kind of hunt ghosts and whatnot. Hmm. Hunt ghosts? Hunt. Oh, okay. So, because I was thinking, punt, punting ghosts would be a pretty funny way to do this. <laughs> no, nah, it's it's a yeah, like you're, you're ghost hunters. You, you've seen those kind of shows, right? Yes. So this one is like you have a group of friends. Uh, one would probably take care of the inside. The other would probably try and look. Like all you need to do is just catalog the ghosts or what uh, the poster guys are there, and get out. Like, I recommend go see a video of it, Silver, because it is a lot of fun and it's really hectic. And it's some people who are not the strong of heart, yeah, might not have fun. <laughs> so, yeah, so sorry for the sidetrack. Not to worry. Then I went through this phase of books that really didn't wow me. So... It kind of broke the the sci-fi adventure, so I I went western. Oh, with Journal of the Gun Years, highly recommended and a very well done book. Basically, a a renowned gunslinger dies, and a publisher gets a hold of his journal. Oh, and so it's a study of his life leading up to the legend, but also how the legend becomes bigger than the man and actually destroys the man. Oh. So it's not a feel-good mo- book, but it's fascinating to read or hear. Oh, okay. So all of those books, like you listen to them throughout your working days? Or at home working on a video, yes. And I'm on my final final set, uh, the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. Lightbringer? Why, why is that so familiar? I don't know. But it's a story set in a fantasy realm where magicians split light to create magic. You And they are known as drafters. So you may have an aptitude for drafting blue magic or green magic or red or subred. And within this realm, there is one who can draft all the colors, the prism, essentially the emperor of this realm. But there's the current uh, prism has many, many secrets and many skeletons in his closet. And a very big part of this is the discovery of these secrets. Also, while a young man, the prism's supposed bastard is coming into his own. And I'm currently listening to a fire upon the deep by uh, Renur Vinge, a big to do in the sci-fi community as it was a a Hugo Awarded winner, best novel. And in this one, there is, the theory is that there are different realms of thought within the galaxy. We, of course, occupy the really slow and stupid part of the galaxy, naturally. But as you, as a species evolves, they enter the transcendence and become something more. And this is a book about the process and perils that come with that. Yeah, I'm noticing also a pattern where you like space. <laughs> I'm in space. I like fantasy and I like sci-fi. So, and it's been a big year for both in terms of listening in. Uh, I mean, that's good because uh, by the sound of it, like there's a lot of really awesome content for those kind of stories. It's true. Well, I'll continue. I've used up all my Audible credits, which means, guess why I might actually have to start paying for stuff now. <gasps> well, uh, if I don't mistake it, Audible credits are renewed every month right like you get one token each month oh one token that's a book that might last me three weeks 
I mean, I've been going after the really big, thick books with the tokens, of course. But. But yeah, it's been, uh, I think audiobooks and YouTube have been my two primary means of entertainment this bizarre year. Yeah. Like, by the sound of it, it's it's warranted because uh you you in your line of work you're mostly uh we, we'll be in front of the pc and whatnot so it makes sense like uh talking about audiobooks the only one i had is just uh ready player one <laughs> ah you wanted to know what it was really like no uh, i heard it from a podcast way back when and they were talking about the book and it was it sounded great and uh, I subscribed to Audible for a bit, and yeah, like you know what, I'm gonna try it out. Audible, like just listen to it, and oh boy, was it fun! Like it was totally different from the movie. <laughs> from what I gather, the movie really took a lot of liberties, mostly due to legal legal restrictions. True, but at the same time, too, uh, a lot of other things that they didn't really show, trimmed down, cut down, uh, the book kind of played the story in terms of uh, length, like how long and how many years the main character had time to develop and whatnot. The movie was kind of the span of a week, a month, an hour. Yeah, they worked through it pretty fast. But still, um, it, was, it was still fun. It was still fun. And uh, like you mentioned, you, you you most of your time have been uh, eaten up by YouTube and uh, audiobooks. As for me, uh, my thing has always uh, has been on uh, Magic the Gathering, card games, and uh, a bit of video games. Like it's it's been uh, what eighty percent Magic, ten percent movies. And videos and the other 10 would be on games like i've noticed that i haven't been playing games a lot i really want to play back some of those old games or whatever but never had the time wow funny enough for, for a pandemic year time has not been on our side i mean everyone says oh you're locked at home surely surely there there's plenty of time to do stuff well, no, I've got actually a lot of demands, and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hmm. the, the, not, from, not even from my, you. I, I did, I did. <laughs> no, I mean, I I understand the whole feeling, man. Like, and and I guess we're already grown up. Like, we want to play a lot of games, and the pandemic gives us a lot of time to play games but at the same time too am i the only one that feels guilty for quote-unquote wasting time on playing video games while i could have been doing other things no not at all i wrestle with that as well but there's something to be said that taking a little time for yourself just to decompress is important i guess i'm just growing up you say talk about growing up to the guy who turned 40 in 2020 <laughs> i mean really <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh man! Uh, oh ah, well, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things, man. There's a lot of things going on. Oh man! Uh, but but that's besides the point. That's besides the point. Is there anything more to add, Silver? Nope. Let's look into another Western book again. See see what else is but, out there. But maybe you can ask the audience for recommendations. Uh, could always send them to your Twitter. Well, we shall see. A lot of the old Western books are, eh, they can also be a little bit racist. It was the times. It was the times. I guess I should also say I, I've watched uh, Kira Major and Kamen Rider. What was it? Uh, dang it. Kamen Rider Zero One. Those were my Japanese ah, tokusatsu yeah. of uh, of 2020. Zero one good? I thought it was good. It it had a really slow part in the middle, a really dragging arc, but then it got better again. It got really good. Ah, all right. And it tackled some interesting ideas. Hmm, all right. I don't know. Um for me I, I, I didn't watch any 
Oh no, you reminded me of something. Yeah, I I watched Beast Beast Stars. Oh, you've gone the full anime furry. Yeah, man. Like I heard a lot of good things about it, and oh man, I I I <laughs> I jump into that rabbit hole real bad because watch the anime, anime kind of done with season one. Can't wait for season two that's coming out this year. But went into the manga and just spoiled myself. <laughs> so yeah, oh man, can't can't wait for twenty twenty one B Star season two. That's gonna be fun. Excellent. Yep. So anyway, let's wrap things up. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at tmbshowgmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at Mia Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the people find you? All right, let's run down the list, shall we? You can find me on DeviantArt and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also support my videos and comics through uh, Patreon or Ko-fi, just to search for Silver Quill. On the YouTube's, a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact will reveal me. And on Wednesdays, I post reviews on of new comics for Equestria Daily, which at the time of this rec- at the time we're doing this podcast, uh, they pulled a bit of a switcheroo on us. Oh, whoa, 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 why? Well, the previous week they just concluded the Zakura Homecoming arc, mm-hmm. and then no, not even a week later they're doing the next issue. Oh, it's like wow, get, give us a little time to breathe here, would you please? <laughs> No, season 10. Season 10, it feels like early airings. Uh, oh, no, they go spoil. No, it's been leaked. <laughs> oh, why do I fear that could actually... Actually, yes, there was a leak. What, really? I mean, it's not quite like a leak of the, sh- the show. Diamond distributors messed up. They sent cover A of issue 93 out the week issue 92 was released. Oh, God. So some people have already read the comic. Yeah, and they're kind enough not to spread it online. That is the hope. There's an adventure. I really need to catch up with the comics. Like, <laughs> I, I really need to catch up. I haven't even read season 10 yet. Well, there's only four issues of season 10, which is two episodes. So yes. Yeah, like I really should keep up. I don't know. I, I, I'm i trying to think why I haven't really read... Um, season 10 and whatnot and I, I'm guessing that I just want to be surprised when we review stuff but anywho is that all Silver? yeah that's that's all I got alright so anyway also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes YouTube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page you can also catch us on com. links are in the show notes if you would like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash mbs show with every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also my stuff like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And will guys catch you, well, next episode with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Oh, let's just hope that this year will be a nice and better year. The bar has been set quite low, but honestly, a vaccine will be the best part of it. Oh, totally. Oh, you know what? Something I forgot to mention. We didn't even talk about the new console that came out last year. <laughs> I haven't gotten either. Yeah, true, true. Oh, or that one game, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> I told my friends that was an option for my birthday, but I think they wisely held off. Yeah, good thing. Like, that game, oh god. I really wanted to play that game, and now I'm just thinking, you know what, I'm just going to wait for the stuff. <laughs> Or lots of patches. Lots and lots of patches. Yeah, me digging steeple.